In this problem, we're going to do another circular motion problem, but this time we're going to do it with gravity. All right, so these problems work uh, well when there's like an object that's orbiting or something like that. Uh, there are a couple things that we need to know that you should already know by now. Here is a quick review, right? You should know things like if we use the word weight, that is the uh, same as saying force of gravity. You should also know whenever we talk about G, that G is the gravitational field strength. Uh, which is uh, different on every planet, right? And so some planets are stronger, some planets are weaker. Force of gravity is calculated by mg, and that only really works when you're on a planet where you actually know the gravitational field strength g. Uh, so if we are on Earth, right, we do mg all the time, where g is 9.8, but it doesn't. we don't usually use it if we go to another planet or if we're far from Earth or in outer space. So when we're far from Earth, then we start using this equation here force of gravity equals big G mm over r squared, stuff like that, where big G is a constant. It's the same everywhere. You can find it in your AP or IB equation sheets. R is always the distance specifically from the center of the two objects that are pulling on each other, and the m's are their respective masses. So these are some things you should know by now if you're going to solve any problems that deal with gravitational forces uh, far from Earth or on other planets or near other planets or between other planets. All right, so we're going to do this problem here. Uh, let's say Ben takes his cat to a mysterious barren planet. The barren planet has a radius of 6,100 kilometers and a mass of whatever that number is, 9 point blah, 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 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. And we, this, mount, this planet <laughs> magically has, don't ask, magically has no hills, no mountains, whatever. So this is just so that um, the cat can um, be shot and we want the cat to orbit all the way around the planet. And the question is, is exactly how fast does he need to fire that cat if the cat is only two meters high off the ground so that the cat never hits the ground and it actually orbits the planet? Okay, so if there was mountains, it'd run into something, right? Hence the barrenness. All right, let's do it. So first things first, we want to draw a free body diagram. Here's my picture, nice and easy, force of gravity. That's it. I don't see any other forces acting on the cat. Some of you might put like a force forward from the cannon, but this is after the cannon fires. That's what we're focusing on while it's in the air itself, and that makes the problem a lot easier. All right, so we're going to list our variables. All we know is the radius of the planet, the mass of the planet. I want to know the speed it's moving at, so the uh, speed that's tangential to the circle. And I don't know the mass of the cat. I bet that's probably important. Uh, but I have no idea what it is, so I'm just listing it as an unknown in red. It's a pain. I would like to know what it is. All right, so we're going to now use fnet equals ma and customize it, right? We customize it in the same way we always do. We're going to replace uh, a with v squared over r, and we're going to replace fnet with the sum of all force, which in this case is just one force, the force of gravity. We've got force of gravity over here. Normally, we replace force of gravity with mg. This time, we can't because I'm not really on Earth. I don't know what g is. So we're going to use the big equation. Force of gravity equals big G mm over r squared. Let's plug it in and see where this takes us. Now, keep in mind, I don't know this mass, but it's OK. It'll all work out in the end. I plug it in over here. I don't know the little mass. I'll, I'm just saying the big mass is the mass of the planet. The little mass is the mass of the cat. Uh, but now I have masses on both sides, and they can just vanish. Notice I also have a radius on both sides. Uh, so one of them are, is going to disappear over here as well, and they cancel out. So I have only one radius left. I'm looking for the speed. All I have to do now is rearrange, plug, chug, solve. And there's my answer. Apparently the answer is um, 10,000 meters per second, which is, if you don't know, really, really crazy fast. Now, I just want to point out a couple of things before I move on. Um, I made sure that the distance, the radius, was in meters. That's always important. So don't forget stuff like that. And, well, I guess that's it. There you go. All right, let's look at the physics of the have versus the need now. All right, so on this side, I have force of gravity that is supplying the force inwards. And on this side, I have this interpretable force that is calculating how much I need to go in a circle. Now, we've set it so that the two were equal when we solved. We said F net equals MA. And we force these two to be equal because we know it's going to go in a perfect circle. That's how we found the speed of about 10,000 meters per second. So what we want to do is we want to look at some situations where we tweak it. So what happens if all of a sudden, instead of shooting the cannon at exactly 10,000 uh, meters per second, uh, what if instead I shoot it 
more than that. So in other words, the speed that I shoot it at is extra fast. And um, I want to see what happens to the motion of the object. If the speed goes up and the, let's assume the radius stays the same, what happens is, is the uh, acceleration should go up and I therefore need more force so I can get more acceleration. The only problem is the force supplying that force towards the center is the force of gravity. And if you recall, the force of gravity only is calculated by the gravitational constant, which doesn't change, the two masses of the planet, which doesn't change if I fire the cat faster, and it doesn't change with the radius as well, right? So it's still the same distance. So therefore, the force of gravity I actually have remains constant. And instead of having these two, like my need going up and therefore my how much I have going up, like it would with a reactionary force like tension, these don't equal each other. So that means that it's no longer going to go in a circle. So exactly what will it do? Well, the universe is going to try and still keep these two the same, even though at this moment they're not. So what's going to happen is, is the universe is going to try and make the need go back down to what it used to be. So in the past, the have or the need went up because I went faster, uh, but I still have the same amount of force. So what it's going to try and do is try and make this stay the same by keeping the centripetal acceleration the same. And the only way to keep this the same if the speed goes up is if my radius goes up. So the fact that my speed is extra big, what that actually does is it actually means that I will come outwards and move outwards because the universe is trying to balance this equation. And as a result, the radius gets larger. That's why when you go too fast, the thing spirals outwards. Similarly, if you fire the cat too slowly, it does the opposite, right? Where what you need goes down, but you still have the same amount. And so it will try and decrease that radius and you'll spiral inwards, which means you're going to end up actually the cat will actually hit the earth most likely.